welcome everybody to McCormick Family Worship Night. I love you all. So, Aunt Kathy, would you open us up? Hi. <laughs> Thanks. First of all, I'd like to thank you. It's a blessing to be asked to um, to speak in your prayer service. And I want you to know that I pray for my children and my nieces and nephews all the time. And I love all of you and pray for wisdom for all of you and um, play that, pray that you'll be a blessing to the world and to the, a blessing to the people around you. Um, I always pray for wisdom and I always, for all of you, and that you'll hear God's voice and uh, that you will follow the path that he leads you on. And um, I, was, I was reading today um, in Ephesians, uh, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. And um, I think that's so true. He has blessed us in um, in spiritual things. We can have love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and mercy and all the fruit of the Spirit. And I'll tell you what, there's been times in my life when joy was all I needed and love was all I needed and peace was all I needed. And so um, I'm so thankful for the, the blessings that he gives us, our, the spiritual blessings, because sometimes it doesn't feel like the earth is blessing us or the world is blessing us, I should say. And so my prayer for all of you, and, and uh, these prayers have been said often, um, is that you will all walk in wisdom and um, walk in the fear of the Lord. And um, I love all of you, and um, I brag about my nieces and nephews all the time. <laughs> I, um, I often say I have 30, and people are very impressed. So, our Father in heaven, I come before you so thankful for my mom and dad who really laid a foundation for, um, for the faith in our family. And um, I, I thank you that they stood firm in their faith and that my mother was on her knees praying for her, her children uh, when she told me she was taking a nap. And Father, um, I pray that you just uh, walk with each one of, of these young people and that um, they would hear your voice, and that you would speak to them and that you would give them wisdom and that their steps would be ordered by the Lord. And Father, I pray that um, in times of sadness and, and darkness that um, you would give them peace. And Father, I pray that um, I know you will never leave us nor forsake us, so I'm so thankful for that. So Lord, um, bless this project that Melissa is working on, and uh, God bless her for thinking of us so far away. Um, and wherever any of you are, just know that um, I love you all very much, no, no matter where you are in your life, because God um, God works with us day by day. And um, I'm so thankful. <laughs> so anyway, love you. Thanks for asking me. Hey everybody. Hello. Saying hello from North Carolina. Hope everybody's doing well. Talk to you guys soon. Bye. Love you and hey. we miss you. Yeah, we love you and we miss you. We got our coffees here. Grace, twas grace that.
us all to sing this brand new song from Elevation Worship and our collaboration with Carrie Joe and uh, it's called The Blessing and it's a pretty amazing and now a timeless song The Lord bless you and keep you Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you.
grateful. Oh, hi. Hey, hey, the Lord bless you and keep you uh, and cause his light to shine upon you. Uh, he's faithful. Um, and that's pretty much all it takes. Uh, he's named faithful. Uh, good to see y'all. Thanks. All right. See ya. Hi, guys. Uncle Kevin here. And I uh, just think it's a great idea for what uh, Melissa's doing. If that's your doing, Melissa, I believe it is. And uh, thanks for the opportunity. And I, I just uh, will do my best to do this. I, it's kind of new to me. But uh, I want to go to a verse in Proverbs. Chapter 13, verse 22 says, A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children. And I... Like most of my brothers and sisters, we're grandparents by now. And so that's one of the main goals in our life is to not only see our kids get saved, but to see that they raise their kids up to become Christians and just to teach them the ways of the Lord and the Word of God. And uh, But I had a chance to go and write down a list of the 30 cousins that uh, you all are related to. And uh, 27 of them are my nieces and nephews. And... Uh, Three of them are my kids. Um, but this is great. And I, I would have a challenge for you guys to, uh, if you get a chance, write down the all the names of your cousins and just realize that those are more than just names. Those are souls. And those are mom and my mom and dad's grandchildren. And those are uh, who uh, this verse is talking about. Not only did mom and dad leave a good inheritance to their ten kids, but we in turn are uh, leaving, are trying to leave a good inheritance to our kids, and then, uh, and then we're we're grandparents too. And one day you all will be grandparents, and so it's just a, the best inheritance or the best heritage a person could have. It's a godly heritage, where not only do we have the joys of uh, the Christian life here on earth, but we have the the joy or the looking forward to eternity spending with our family and our friends and our loved ones. And uh, so I, that's what I would challenge you with. Um, I, I would refer to the Sermon on the Mount because there's eight or nine blesseds in there. And blessed is, I guess, the simplest way to put it is to be happy. And it tells you, blessed are the pure in heart, blessed are the peacemakers, blessed are the poor in spirit. If you get a chance, go there. And if you're lacking a little joy in your life or happiness, go through those things and make sure you're doing those things with your life. But this uh, inheritance that we're talking about is not a money inheritance. It's a spiritual inheritance that is just, like I say, it's the only thing worth uh, striving for in life. It's the main, the most important thing in life is to have a godly heritage and leave that for your kids and your grandkids. And, uh, and one last thought is take a look at those names. Some of you are just awesome and you're blessed of the Lord and you know it. And, uh, but don't, don't forget that the badge of a Christian is humility. Always wear that badge of humility and, uh, because God will honor you. If we humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord, he will lift us up. And remember all the names on that list. When you make that list, pray for all your cousins or your brothers and sisters, or whoever may be on that list, and consider those that, uh, I was just thinking of Robbie and Rosie. I, when I made this list of kids, there were two of mom and dad's kids that did not have the blessing of having kids, and it was Rosie and Robbie. But that didn't make them any less special in the sight of the Lord. And it's funny, they're both in heaven right now, and I miss them. I look forward to seeing them again, and Eddie, and mom and dad, and Lord knows how many other relatives we're going to get to meet when we get to heaven because we don't know who all our ancestors are. But uh, I hope that'll take you'll take that as a challenge to pray for your cousins, every one of them. As we grow older, we lose touch with a lot of our cousins and we focus more on our kids and our grandkids. And just uh, thanks, Melissa. I've enjoyed doing this and I hope we can uh, get to do this again sometime. Okay, thanks. I love you all. God bless you. I love you, too. Can't wait to hug and kiss y'all. Bye. Okay. Bye, guys. Take care. All the McCormick cousins just wanted to leave a blessing, a teaching on the blessings of the Lord. 
I'm going to say a quick prayer and then I'll go into the, my reading. Lord, I pray that you give me wisdom. Give me your anointing, God. Give me eyes to see. Give me ears to hear your voice. Make me sensitive, God, to what it is I'm teaching. Let me be led by your spirit in Jesus' name. I'm going to go to 1 Corinthians, where Paul was writing to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians 15, 58. He said, Therefore, my beloved, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain. You know, in the book of James, it says, Be ye doers of the word, not just hearers only deceiving yourself. I think of Jesus... I'll, I'll paint a picture that, you know, when Jesus was beginning to start his ministry, he would call fishermen and his people, and people would drop their nets and would follow him. But before that happened, in Matthew chapter 4, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness where he fasted and prayed for 40 days. And when he was hungry, the tempter or the devil came to him and said, Hey, Jesus, if you be the Son of Man, command this stone to become bread. Jesus said that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. The tempter came to him a second time. Then the tempter came to him a third time. If you be the son of God, I'm going to take you up to the highest pinnacles of the city. I'm going to offer you all the kingdoms of the world and all the glory you're going to receive if you'll bow down and worship me. And Jesus said, I will bow and worship the Lord thy God only. Later, Jesus talked about two foundations. This is a really big, important part of this message about the blessing for the cousins, the McCormicks, the, the foundations. And we know as McCormicks, we're masons, a lot of us. We do, we do carpentry. We do all kinds of different work. But the foundation is really important for this structure to be secure. And Jesus said, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and doth them will be like a wise man that built his house upon the rock. And when the waves and the winds and the bloop came and beat upon that house, the house stood because it was built on the foundation of Christ. But therefore, who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them would be like the foolish man who built his house upon the sand. When the waves and the winds came and beat upon the house, the house fell. Now, John, in the book of John, John chapter 1, it says this. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He said, Tis To many that received him, to them became the power to become the sons of God. You have to receive the Word to become a son of God. And that's what he was talking about. To many that received him, Jesus is the Word, right? Mm -hmm. To many that received him... Peter said it like this, desire the sincere milk of the word that you can grow thereby. I'm going to close in the book of Psalms. David wrote this in Psalms chapter 1. I'm going to try to read it very slowly so you get this. It says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinner, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in the law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but they are like chaff with the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish." I'm going to go over one verse that's very important in this. It says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. You see, our counsel doesn't come from uh, secular television or from the radio or for other people even. The counsel has to come from God's word. We're supposed to live and obey the word of God. That is our teacher, our counselors. And it's the only thing that's going to matter at the end of our lives or in the process of our life or anything that's going to work in the midst of our life. You know, in Proverbs, it says a wise man leaves an inheritance to his children and his children's children. And the, the, the inheritance that I believe that is eternal 
is the fire and the zeal and walking in the wisdom and the counsel of God's word. That needs to be part of our activity when we come together in, in, as a family. We need to share the love and the word of God. And he said, you will be like a tree planted by rivers of water that bring forth fruit. And the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, meekness. That fruit on our tree is not for us, but for other peoples to pick from. In Jesus' name, amen. Hi, Melissa. Hi, family. How's it going? Pastor Johnny J. right here on Martha's Vineyard. Listen, I'm out in my garden. I'm getting ready to plant a whole bunch of tomato plants. I'm going to plant about 40 tomato plants. We're going to have so many tomatoes. We're going to have bushels and bushels of tomatoes. We're going to make lots of pizza sauce, lots of spaghetti, lasagna, marinara sauce. We're going to have so much delicious pasta sauce, red sauce. Uh, because of all these tomatoes that we're going to um, put into the ground. You know, God said in Genesis, Genesis 8, 22, that it, for as long as the earth endures, there will remain seed time and harvest. So that's something you can count on. So consider having a garden this year, growing, putting seeds in, and watching God's word come to pass. His word will return to him after it has accomplished that which he sent it to do. You know, it also says in the book of Galatians, I think about chapter, Galatians 6, chapter 7, it says, God's not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. He that soweth to his flesh will reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit will receive, will reap life everlasting. If you sow to the Spirit, you will reap eternal benefits and rewards. Your payoff will last indefinitely. There will be a huge return on your investment if you don't faint. If you don't grow worry, if you endure, wouldn't it be a shame if I decided I was too tired? It, it's, it was a lot of work uh, putting these holes, cutting through and getting this average soil out so I can put some super soil in there to really feed these plants and nourish them. It's a lot of work, but, but if I stopped now, I would get no tomatoes, nada, zip, zero. No tomatoes would come because I, I didn't endure. God wants us to stay faithful, stay strong, especially when things are crazy right now. He wants us to walk in peace, have a serenity about ourselves, a, a wholeness, a happiness, a contentness, uh, even, even during a pandemic when the whole world is afraid. And the whole world literally is, is afraid of dying. Christians have already got the victory. Plant a garden this year, grow a victory garden, and watch God's miraculous word come to pass as fruits and vegetables uh, just come up bountifully out of the earth. Sow good seeds and acknowledge and praise the living God. Sing praises to his name. The, those are sowing seeds to the Spirit. Read his word, acknowledge him, worship him, glorify him. It'll change your countenance, it'll change your health, it'll change your attitude and your perspective, and you will walk in victory. People will start liking you and following you and wanting to be around you and be like you. Listen, be a gardener, but be a spiritual gardener. Prioritize sowing to the Spirit. Whatever that means, find it out, go see what that means, and do it in Jesus' name. Amen? See you, bye. Hi, beautiful McCormick nieces and nephews and cousins and all the family that are going to listen to this. I just wanted to jump on for a minute and just speak a blessing over you in the name of Jesus. So the first thing I have to say is that you are much loved. When we heard news that you were going to be born, we were excited. We were awaiting the day. We couldn't wait till you guys were going to be born. Um, who's it going to be? Is it going to be a boy or a girl? What are they going to look like? Like we really had a big anticipation of all the babies that were coming and it was a very exciting time when you guys were being born for all of us. You have a godly heritage. Your grandma and grandpa loved the Lord. They got saved 
and filled with the Holy Spirit and just prayed for their families and prayed for you and just believed great things for you. So you come from a godly heritage and your parents are from a godly heritage. And so that is your lineage. And you were pray you are prayed for still right now by your parents and by your relatives. And so I just want to share with you a couple blessings that people have prayed over me or taught me over the years. So um, I want to say to you that you are blessed coming in and going out, that you will be the first and not the last, the head and not the tail, that the favor of the Lord is upon you and the blessings of God are chasing you down. And that's the truth. And if you believe it and if you say it, you'll reap the benefits from it. I've seen these benefits in my own life. And according to Psalm 91, may you dwell in the secret place of the Most High and may you rest in the shadow of his wings and may his angels have charge around you lest you dash your foot against a stone and no harm and no plague will come near you or your dwelling in Jesus name. These are all things taken out of Psalm 91. So you can read Psalm 91 and you can pray Psalm 91 and we don't have to have any fear during this time, this um, pandemic, this crisis, this fearful time. We don't have to fear because our trust is in the Lord and the Lord is going to deliver us out of this and he's going to protect us. Just as when people put the blood above their doorposts, the firstborn of Israel was not harmed, but the firstborn of Egypt passed away. So the blood represents God's protection. So also, I want you to know that God is for you. He overshadows you. He undergirds you. He's round about you. He's your rear guard. He goes before you to make a way. So you are surrounded with God. These are all scriptures that this prayer is taking from. And he surrounds you with favor as a shield. So if there's something you need or something you lack, ask God. We have not. You're in the video, babe. <laughs> we have not because we don't ask. So I'm just going to make sure I said it all. He's for you. He's your rear guard. He surrounds you with favor as a shield. And then he also gives you the armor of God, which is the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the shield of faith to distinguish the fiery darts of the enemy and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And also the feet with the readiness and preparedness to preach the gospel of peace. So God has equipped you with a lot of things and your family has equipped you with a lot of things. And you're good looking because you look like your relatives, right? So I just want you to know that you're loved and I just want to bless you in the name of Jesus. And I'm going to end with this. Um, may the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. Sorry, this is going to make me cry because my grandmother and my mother said this over us. So you guys need someone saying it over you. So sorry, got to put my glasses back on. I'll try it one more time. May the road rise up to meet you. And may the wind be always at your back. And that wind represents the Holy Spirit. May the sun shine warm upon your face. And that represents God's mercy. And the rains fall soft upon your fields. Until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of of his hand. You are very loved. Hi family. I am up north in Petoskey on the Little Traverse Bay. Me and the kids just taking a break from being at home and being inside and I wanted to speak a blessing to you, my family, the children of my brothers and sisters, and to your spouses and also to your children. I want to speak a blessing over you in the name of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to speak a blessing over your lives so that you would have wisdom, uncanny wisdom, that when you ask the Lord to guide you and to give you wisdom, that you hear his voice and it's easy to discern it. And that you have such wisdom that other people come to you for advice. And I want to speak a blessing of joy over your lives that whether in feast or famine, in times of plenty or times of lack, in sickness or in health, that you would have joy. The everlasting joy of the Lord would be in your heart and that you would always have a song to sing, that the joy of the Lord would be your strength in every situation. And I bless you also with strength 
our parents had such strength, grandma and grandpa, grandma having 10 children, and that same strength that the Lord blessed them with is on your lives. So I pray that you would have wisdom, that you would have joy, and that God would bless you with unbelievable strength, that also that people would come to you because you are so strong, and they would rely on the Lord and rely on the strength that God has given you. So with those three things, wisdom, joy, and strength, so those are things that you can have with Jesus. Wisdom, joy, and strength. I pray this blessing upon you in the name of Jesus. I love you all. So we have a little surprise for you aunts and uncles watching. This is the virtual McCormick family cousin choir. <laughs> and you're very special. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small, child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all. I wish that you could all see God's ocean in the splendor. It wouldn't take you long to know that He is the great ascender. So come, my friends, away from earth. Don't seek the world's pretender. We learn some lessons pretty hard, and for our salvation, we at times forget to thank the sender. In speaking to you now, this I hum humbly ask God's blessing upon my daily search of Him and in my hours resting. For earth becomes my stumbling block and woe my daily ladder. And all my deeds are but in vain and just some din and clatter. And so I ask you, Lord Most High, as constantly you're giving, please continue on and don't ever stop forgiving. <laughs>